Before we begin, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Dolany TV and on Instagram at Tyson Dolany. You guys want to make sure you see what's going on behind the scenes here on Dolany TV. That's where to find it. Let's get going. This is Dolany TV, guys. Welcome back to episode two of the Edmonton Oilers franchise mode here in NHL 19. Of course, a little bit more of a downbeat intro than you guys are probably used to, but of course, tonight a very heavy. Heartfelt night in hockey when it comes to Canada, especially following what happened last April. So just with that, I've had a very rough drive home from work, just thinking about it all the way home. And seriously, the only thing I can come to think of to say is that my thoughts and heart are in Humboldt tonight with uh, the, the town and everybody as they try to come back from the tragedy that was in April and it's only one step in the healing and becoming the next chapter of the Humboldt Broncos. But like I said, my thoughts and heart go out to them and hope all the best. Um, that's a little bit more emotional than I was hoping to get to start an episode. But guys, we're going to keep it easy going, easy, uh, easy pace on this episode. That one, sorry. Okay. All right. Let's just calm down, relax a second. Let's uh, get the set up all good, good there and okay so Humboldt's taken care of guys if you're in Canada you'll probably be able to watch it on TSN if you don't have TSN I'm sure you'll be able to find a link somewhere online make sure you do it as your patronage as a hockey fan in Canada so let's get this episode started Milan Lucic we got to figure out what to do with him but you guys in episode one we're calling for the head of Al Montoya to be traded so that's the first thing we're going to do is go in and substitute Al Montoya for Miko Koskinen who's up there in the AHL right now so we're going to get Stuart Skinner in for Miko Koskinen you guys see I have kind of switched things around I restarted the rosters just to get the most up-to-date rosters so episode one was kind of a sham not really but really so let's go options two roster moves and get our man Miko Koskinen up to the NHL and get rid of maybe, I'm thinking a Lucic and Al Montoya deal all in one swift move would take care of the things in Edmonton. I'll show you kind of what I'm thinking along the lines. Fog of War, we really don't have any time to scout anyone, so I'm going to go find an NHL body that I'm confident in. And that's kind of going to be the move I'm going to make. So Miko Koskinen up to the NHL. Um, move will bring your over the allowable players oh I see okay all right hold on we'll get this sorted no problem <sighs> no problem at all send down Eurobeck confirm the send down of him we'll get the goalies and go get ourselves Mr. Miko Koskinen up to the NHL there we go that's taken care of so now we make the move that counts in terms of posing the trade for Al Montoya and Milan Lucic I'm not sure exactly what I'm looking for but I know I am looking for an NHL left winger, so I'm just going to sort this out, show you guys my thought process, right? Um, player potential, all that. Yeah, we've been through this. I know this. CPUs, trade interest. Okay, perfect. Interested in giving away. All right. So, hmm, who do we want to give up? Well, I've already made that clear, haven't I? Milan Lucic, who has little to no trade value. And then at the same rate, the goaltender that doesn't matter in Edmonton, right? Great backup, great backup is Al Montoya, but problem is he's just not going to fit and Koskinen is more than ready to take over for him. So you see that lowers our salary cap quite a bit, a good reasonable amount, that is for sure. So now becomes the question, we have 50 contracts, so I'd like to move a pick if I could. That would be a very ideal move if we have a third round. We do we have an extra third round pick to give away. So I'm going to gamble on ours, not gamble on the Islanders. The Islanders pick could be a lot better than ours. So we're going to find ourselves a team that's willing to give up a left winger. Maybe go somewhere like Columbus. See what Columbus has in terms of left wingers. And you see our Temi Panarin way too much. A guy like Boone Jenner, top nine, medium potential forward, 80 overall. That That's kind of the fit I'm looking for, right? 80. 82 83 in there full binoculars. I don't want to get a shot on somebody. I don't know too much about so Columbus We're thinking about that Dallas 
Detroit, Florida, LA, Minnesota, Montreal. Don't want to pick on them. They're a rebuilding team. And how about New Jersey? This is a good trade we could make, right? Not uh, obviously Taylor Hall, but a Marcus Johansson. This is the exact trade we need, right? Marcus Johansson. He's got the full binoculars, good trade value, a great contract. He's under contract for one more year. So if he works, we can work it out for us. So a third, El Montoya and Milan Lucic for Marcus Johansson. I think it's a trade we can make. And it's going to be rejected. We are quite off, far off on value. That's okay. I'll give up a second. I don't care about giving up a second. I show you guys this because you didn't really give me too many options. But I'm thinking if we give up a second, that really boosts our value. We get Marcus Johansson on a one-year deal. See what gets help. But the big thing is like the CPU will try to do to us in franchise mode this year. We're dumping Milan Lucic and trade accepted. So right there on behalf of the New Jersey Devils, we are happy to accept your deal. That's huge. That helps us greatly. That's an absolutely massive move. Edit lines. Yes, the lines must be fixed. That's no problem. We can fix the lines. So that gives us on our left wing, that gives us substitute in all lines, Marcus Johansson. So right there, that's my first move as general manager of the Edmonton Oilers. A huge trade for a great left winger. 83 overall, second line overall. You see he's a playmaker, so he's going to fit well on that line with Dreisaitl. Great shooting, great everything. Offensive awareness is up there. He can play the defensive game, 86 defensive awareness, so it's going to work. That's going to be an absolutely great move for us. The problem is goalies now need to be filled. Nico Koskinen, we'll get him in there. And extras, you see we have an error on three on three where we don't have a left winger that's okay because you go in and you fill in left winger marcus johansson and we'll substitute him in there there you go bing bang boom boys we've got ourselves a move so that's what we're kind of shaping up i wanted to show you now the new roster for the oilers you've got nugent hopkins on the left wing with mcdavid and ratty this is of course temporary i've promised you guys that we are only going to make this move so long as it is viable. If Ty Ratty's putting the puck in the net and we're winning games, Ty Ratty stays there. Yes, he pulled the RV dry settle and now Johansson. Great second line. Could get a lot done. Yes, he pulled the RV could really grow. He's a medium elite. He looks to be promising. We just need him to get the job done, right? That's all it comes down to. Tobias Reeder, Ryan Strom, Drake Jula. Right now, I know you guys want Ponte Sabert in the AHL. Um, I'm going to keep him in the NHL until Scotty Upshaw, we know what's going on with Scotty Upshaw, right? Until we know that, I'm not making a move, and I think we're not going to know that for a while, so pardon that, and I'm not sure why something just glitched on the screen there, that's not good, it all looks to be rectified now, alright, good to go. So, the defense, I'll make sure you guys are aware of this move as well, Clefbaum, Larson, Nurse, Benning, Russell, and Ethan Bear are the defensive pairs. Of course, that takes out Andre Sekra for the time being. I'm probably gonna sit him for the year and then trade him after the season. But Ethan Bear at a top six potential now gets his shot to grow into his own game in the NHL for another season. You see, he had a heck of a year. Um, where do I see his stats for past year? How do I see that? Um, full career stats, that's what I'm looking for. So he had 18 games played last year, one goal, three assists, four points minus 11 so we're hoping he can kind of jump start a little bit more and get a little bit better in terms of uh offensive production in the nhl especially alongside chris russell so that's as simple as it gets so basically now what i'm asking you is i have to go to the rookies and show you guys who i want to bring up to kind of scout alongside if you know for the preseason we have projected picks in the first second or first third third fourth sixth and seventh so i also will go in and get some picks on who i'm gonna scout and you see right now they're kind of mid-ranking us 12 13 14 samuel pulin vashlav kolstev and uh, alexander ladipov i hope i nailed it i don't think i did those are our picks in the draft and you've got forward depth chart. This is kind of what we need to go figure out is who we don't have fully scouted. I didn't do that great of a job. But you see, it looks like we have binoculars on everybody so far in the system. That's good news for us. That gives us a lot of chance. 
So obviously we don't need to worry too much about forwards. When it comes to defense, it looks like the defense is pretty well taken care of as well. The role, everything is kind of scouted perfectly. So Evan Bouchard, we'll get him up here, figure out what we can do with him in terms of preseason action and such and such. But guys, I want to know who you want to see in preseason action for the Edmonton Oilers next episode. Oh, Caleb Jones, obviously he's going to be in there for me playing alongside Ethan Bear for a couple of games. But guys, let me know. Goalie depth chart, you know, maybe bring up Oliver Rodriguez, Stuart Skinner, the boys. Let me know, guys. This has been episode two where we traded away Al Montoya, Milan Lucic, and a second round pick for Marcus Johansson. That is an absolute steal, 100% in my books, dumping that Lucic contract.